Hi, everybody. I'd like to make a short video to talk a little bit about <clears throat> SMART's extreme and restricted utilitarianism. <clears throat> now, what he's talking about here with extreme and restricted utilitarianism is what's called act and rule utilitarianism. That is, that's two different things. There's act utilitarianism and rule utilitarianism. Act utilitarians argue that every individual act should be treated as valuable in terms of its utility. That it's the consequences of the action in terms of utility or benefit. Restricted utilitarianism here is meant to mean rule utilitarianism. And rule utilitarianism says that utility is calculated in terms of the rules that best maximize utility. Utility here means benefit. So we know from reading some of the historical material about utilitarianism that utilitarianism, according to J.S. Mill, holds that an act is right if it increases the pleasure, decreases the pain of everyone involved. Now we're gonna be talking more in terms of humans here, although utilitarians tend to think of morality as applying to pleasure and pain, suffering and uh, happiness for all sentient creatures. So for instance, utilitarians will be the ones that would tend to argue that um, using animals, using non-human animals for food is unethical because it causes a lot of animal suffering. Now there are some uh, utilitarian folks, some that allow that the less suffering than the less bad, but we won't go into that. Um, suffice it to say that utilitarianism is about utility. Utility is defined as, think of it as in terms of uh, benefit uh, and utility in terms of pleasure, displeasure is uh, what's at stake there. So back to the SMART article. He uses these terms for some reason differently, he uses different terms, that is extreme to mean act utilitarianism and restricted to mean rule utilitarianism. Okay, so extreme utilitarianism, he says, regards rules as rules of thumb. So extreme utilitarians would use rules, but only insofar as the outcome of the rule was um, of maximum benefit as opposed to some other act that could be performed. Restricted utilitarians regard moral rules as codes to be followed if the benefits of following the rule is greater than not following it. So you can see what the problem that is coming up here for SMART is he thinks restricted utilitarianism in his article, rule utilitarianism um, in uh, the sort of common parlance, Restricted utilitarianism would have us use a rule even if in some cases uh, happiness was not maximized because utilitarians want to maximize happiness. They just disagree about how to actually go about it. Okay, extreme utilitarianisms in Smart's use of the words they would say it should be done on a case-by-case -case basis. Each act should be considered in and of itself as to whether it should be performed based on the consequences of the act. For restricted utilitarianism, it all depends on what are the best rules that lead to the greater consequences. So Smart says, surely it is monstrous. Now he's for extreme utilitarianism here, right? So he's criticizing in this paper restricted utilitarianism.
surely it is monstrous to suppose that we should uh, always follow a rule that even though it's beneficial most of the time, it's bad, leads to bad consequences, to suffering, displeasure, some of the time. So think about some cases where a disaster could happen if we don't, say, torture somebody. Um, an act utilitarian um, would say that we should torture that person. And in some ways that seems right. But he would say that rule utilitarianism, which presumably would hold that we should have a rule against torture, um, Smart thinks that restricted utilitarians, I'm gonna use restricted and rule back and forth, I'm sorry, but to mean the same thing, restricted and rule, I'm not sure exactly why, well, I kind of have an idea why he uses restricted, but uh, restricted utilitarianism, he says, um, would have us not do things like prevent disasters by torturing a person who knew where the bomb was. Uh, he says that following rules like that would amount to rule worship, and that doesn't make sense. Now, the point that he's making here, and this is an important point for all of ethics, we're not talking about how people do behave, right? We're talking about how people should behave, not how they do think, but how they should think. Uh, that's the aim of, of course, in philosophical ethics. That's what we're talking about. Um, so sometimes this is called the difference between normative and descriptive. So a descriptive account, a descriptive story of morality would tell a story about how we actually do behave. What do people do in situations that have moral content, that have moral import? Um, but normative story, the normative story, the normative account, normative theories are arguing about how we should behave. So it doesn't matter in this context that we're talking about what people actually do. Of course, there's a caveat there. It would be pointless to talk about what we should do is if we couldn't do it, if we actually couldn't do it. So there's a limit on talking about what we should do versus what we can do. But um, it really is a difference between what we actually do and what we should do. So there's going to be times, like the one just stated with the finding a bomb, for instance, uh, where extreme utilitarianism would go against a rule. Here's another one. He gives another example in the uh, paper. He says, imagine that I'm on a desert island. And I make a promise to a friend who's dying uh, before I'm rescued. Uh, I make a promise to a friend that uh, I will take all of his money, which he's willed to me somehow, and I'll take his fortune and I'll give it to what Smart calls a jockey club. I assume uh, this is some kind of, uh, I don't know, horse racing club or something like that, something that's considered relatively frivolous. Um, though certainly causes a good number of people happiness. And after I leave the island, let's say, you know, when the, my friend is gone, I go back to um, civilization, I have control over his fortune, and I break my promise to give his money to hospital, to hospital charities or hosp to hospitals to save people's lives, because I decide that that would lead to the greater utility of the two actions. In the one case, it would benefit uh, a, a relatively small, aristocratic, elite type of people, fairly small num number, and in the other, presumably it would have much wider benefit, uh, could save lives, which would affect families and future generations and all the rest. So this is a case where Smart thinks that extreme utilitarianism would go against restricted utilitarianism because the rule would probably be don't uh, 
break promises, right? Always tell the truth and do what you say you're going to do. So you have to follow through your commitments, which admittedly, most of the time, that rule will be beneficial and so lead to greater utility than uh, not following the rule. But Smart will argue, is arguing here that there's no mechanism to uh, to create exceptions to the rule. So there shouldn't be a rule, an exceptionless rule, always keep your promise. So um, he thinks it, for that reason, extreme utilitarianism, which has us judge the utility of an act in each individual case, case by case basis, that, um, that that's better. And you should, we should break our promise in certain cases. We should take it on a case by case. Sometimes we should, sometimes we shouldn't. But we shouldn't be uh, locked onto a rule. So rules are made to be broken. Rules should be, should be broken in special circumstances. And the object of our actions should always be human happiness and misery um, and not rules. He thinks it would be just kind of a rule worship to just um, focus on rules all the time. Okay, so I hope that this little video has helped you to understand this article, and uh, thank you for your time and attention.